most exciting evenings uh, of my life, I would say, yes. The Rolling Stones are, in fact, here performing for a very small, select audience at the El Macombo at the College in Spadina. And this is the first time they've done anything like this in about 13 years when they came out of the club circuit back in England. Tonight, to only 300 people are participants in a live album which is being recorded tonight. So this is a treat for the people here, and certainly for myself, one of the most closely guarded secrets in the, probably in the history of recorded music. I said, I know, Hello, Miles. I'm here trying to find you. There you are. How are you? How are you, man? Okay. Thank you. Yes. You're in Nova Scotia. I am in Nova Scotia. I'm from Nova Scotia. April Wine started in Nova Scotia, and I'm back home. How does it feel to be home? How long have you been there? Yeah, but we, I've been back about seven years, I guess. I mean, this I, I love it here. I mean, what's not to like? It's the Maritimes. There's <laughs> ocean everywhere, friendly people, seafood. I love it there too. I spent yeah. a couple of years there, Q104 back in the 80s. It's a, it's a wonderful place, isn't it? It is. It's fantastic. So 45 years ago in March, it was 1977, Miles. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you in the room. If you're not aware, this is playing at the Alma Combo. Have you been in the club since it was redone? I don't think I have. No, well, no, I haven't. Absolutely not. I haven't been there since 77. Incredible. Well, I can tell you this much: the sound in here and and, and everything about the place, I think, would uh, would impress you as it's impressed me. It's a beautiful sounding and looking room. Yeah. Um, so, so you haven't been there since '77, and the reason you were there, you were the band, not the other band. They were the surprise band, but you guys were booked for a whole week. Tell me what you remember about getting that gig and booking that gig and having tape rolling to make a record. Yeah, well, you know, I was involved with uh, with uh, the show coming together, but uh, the uh, the details are basically that it, you know the Rolling Stones had an incident in Montreal in 1972, where some maniac put a bomb under one of their trucks. They were going to be doing a show at the Montreal Forum, and so a lot of equipment was destroyed. I think one truck that was blown up, I believe, had about 50 or so speakers in there, and that was all. They were all destroyed. And through the help of Donald K. Donald and his organization, Donald being the promoter, uh, everybody I'm sure in the business is aware of Donald, um, he and uh, some of the staff were able to help bring in some, uh, some speakers, replacement speakers from Los Angeles. And so the Stones were able to do that show and their manager at the time, or the, the person in charge of their, their tour and so was a Peter Rudge, at the time and Peter remembered that. So years later when they decided to, five years later or so, they decided to do this recording in smaller venues, they remembered April Wine and invited us along. So. And someone who knows all of these names you speak of would be someone in the room right now at the Almo, which is uh, David Bluestein, the promoter. Mm -hmm. he, he was there and a musicologist, as it turns out, Rob Bowman was there. And the guy that was uh, responsible for the radio contest, Duff Roman from Chum Radio, was, oh, yeah, was there sure. and, and is here. And he speaks of how the contest was to send people to see you guys. Yeah. But they wanted to figure out a way to make sure they had Stones fans. No, I mean, we're all Stones fans, but they wanted to make sure they had diehard Stones fans in the room too. Do you remember how that contest went? Well, I mean, I do I do a little bit. It seems to me that the idea was at first just to have a contest to give tickets away. But at some point, they let people know that the Stones were going to be there, and as I recall, and they were giving tickets, uh, so many tickets to, to, to contest winners to be in the venue with the Rolling Stones when they when they performed there. That's how I think it went down. The question they asked to give away tickets to see April Wine with uh, another band, maybe, but they didn't say it was the Stones, was what would you do to party with the Rolling Stones? So people wrote in, you know, letters and, and, and then they won tickets. It was only after the first night when news got out, oh my God, the Rolling Stones were here with April Wine. 
So by the second day, everyone knew about it, and it was impossible yeah, every, every, to get well, in. Right? You know, you're 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 telling me, you know, your memory's better now. You're reading it, so you know what you're talking about. But uh, I had to I had to refer to my notes because Duff Roman uh, shared with me how it worked. Yeah. Yeah, because I remember the whole thing, as it was explained to me, like, we're going to be like a smoke screen. We're going to be, they know that we can sell the venue out. So it's an April wine show, but then, hey, look, you know, be a surprise for everybody. The first night, well, I don't know if it was a complete surprise for the, surprise the first night. I thought it kind of leaked out, but I mean, I could be wrong. But You know, it's, you it know, would be hard not to leak out. All it takes is a phone call. Hey, you yeah, want to what's yeah. Going on. So I think people knew both nights the stones were going to be there, but it was a good secret for while it lasted, right up yeah, until close to the to showtime. Yeah. So it was... what, if someone says to you, nineteen seventy seven, you guys played the Alamo and the Stones were there. What's what's the first thing that comes to your mind about feelings you had then, or something well, that happened then? The only thing you know, I mean, the first the first thing that comes to mind is Jagger uh, being as friendly as he was during soundcheck. I always remember that because uh, he was on the stage and the rest of the, the band, the Stones weren't there, um, but he was there and he was jumping her up, up and down on the stage. It's a small stage and a low ceiling. So he was jumping up and down with his hands in the air to make sure during the show, he didn't hit the ceiling because it was, it was close enough when he starts leaping. <laughs> I remember that. And then he came down and he has this very winning smile. It's like this big. It's true. You know, he's all teeth and and, <laughs> and, and, and it looks like it's a beautiful smile. And uh, and so introduce uh, Mick here, you know, yeah. Hi, well, I'm Miles over the band. Nice to meet you. And he was very friendly. And that always, always is the first thing that I think of. Of course, you know, because of Richard's being busted for heroin, uh, there was a somber mood over everything and it wasn't uh, like a party central, you know, kind of loose and fun and free and uh, they kept to themselves. I mean, I, I only saw Richards and uh, and Wyman at the time and Ron Wood, I'd only see them in passing and it was just literally in passing. There was no stopping and carrying on or talking and kibitzing. It was just business, you know. Keith looked like he could possibly spend a great deal of time in prison um so yeah but you know they 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 pulled it off they played well they got some live uh some live uh you know material for their album so it's it's incredible that it took this long for them to release it all as you probably recall they put a few songs on love you live the stones record and they were good the little red rooster always stands out for me but having just listened to the entire album as it's coming out it is really good you're right well they're they're a great band of course they are. They but are a, with... great, a great, great band. And, and, um, and their, you know, their roots are in the blues. And they had a blues album come out, was it three years ago or four years ago? God, and yeah, I was flies. amazed because I've, I've released a couple of blues records in the last three or four years. Uh, one of them, the, my first one, Miles Goodwin and Friends of the Blues, was nominated for Juno for Blues Album of the Year. That was like three years ago, maybe four. And then my second one also, Moscow and Friends of the Blues 2 did very well, both of them internationally and, and award-winning. So it was very, very gratifying to do that. So when I, when the Stones came out of the blues record, I mean, I was very keen to hear what that was like. And it's a great album. I forget it what really, it's called. It is. But it's a great album. And, and, and Mick can play harmonica, man. He's good. Yeah. <laughs> Keith has always said his favorite harmonica player is Mick. Mick is solid. He saw it and I had no idea because you do hear the harmonic in some stone songs, but not a lot, not like this. The blues was, uh, it was a remarkable album. And, to... and it was sounded like it was recorded off the floor. It has a raw sound, which is which, which what they wanted. The we great. older guys tend to record like a band. What a, what a concept. You know, uh, um, um, Joe Walsh always talks about the difference in, in his mind, the biggest difference between how things were done and how things are often done now is that guys get together in a room and play sure you do some overdubs but can you replace that that the spirit and it doesn't have to be perfect but it has to have a beating heart and yeah of course it, of course of course it does and 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 that's that's the way to record um uh you know you're right there are overdubs but when you get into the basic tracks yeah it has to be there 
and you can't be you can't be one of those I'll fix it in the mix uh, things like you can never fix that in the mix it feels wonderful or just don't so you got to do it right uh, you did it right uh, by having Eddie Kramer on hand as I recall tell me about recording the tracks that you guys recorded when you played with the Stones at the Alma Combo and made a record of it well, the thing, the thing with uh, the recording and all of that, I mean, there's not much to say about that because really it was all about the Stones, Eddie recording the Stones. So when while he's literally rolling tape, uh, may as well, you know, do April Wine. We worked out a deal for some kind of amount of money. My management did. I don't know about that. Uh, you know what it reminds me of uh, when I think back, playing with the Stones and, and it includes the recording of it was basically stay out of the way. You know, it's kind of like, don't get in the way of anything because this is big. This is the biggest thing, you know, in Canada, anywhere right at the moment. Uh, it was like that with the Stones. So I, I can't say very much about the mixing of it because, you know, he was off in his truck. Sure. So you never really see him or hear him. But, you know, he, he was there and did a great job. But what I do remember is post. And that was going to New York. And working with Eddie at uh, Jimi Hendrix's studio, Electric Lady Studios, if I have it right. You do. And I always get that name at the studio mixed up, Electric Lady. No, Man. it's that. Lady, Electric Lady. Yeah, yeah. So so it, what was really funny about that, and, and I read, this is my memoir, it's called Just Between You and Me. Oh, I have to. And, and it's a thick book, and it covers all about the Rolling Stones and the Elma Combo, and it's uh, it was a, a Toronto Globe and Mail bestseller. I don't know if you know that, but it was. So. Well, I can't wait to read it. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you. I hope you enjoy it. And so, and, and it was written with Martin Mel Hewish too. He did a lot of research. Of course. And together we collaborated on the book. It was a lot of fun. Fantastic. But anyway, um, no, it was post the recording. When I went to New York, down to the studio there to meet with him, one of the, one of the funny stories I could tell you about that quickly is that when I was checking in, there were uh, a group of four that long hairs that had just finished checking in and they went off to one, one side and I went up. And I said, uh, they said, yes, can I help you? I said, yes, I'm Miles Goodwin uh, with April Wine. And, and I hear one of the guys behind me say, and I must have said the band April Wine. And one of the guys says, what kind of name is that <laughs> for a band, April Wine? You know? And I heard that, you know? And like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I said to the lady, and they kind of wandered off. And I said to the lady, uh, she, I said, who were they? He goes, oh, that's a new band called Kiss. And so <laughs> they didn't care for the name or they thought it was a funny name, April Wine. But working there with Eddie was, was the nicest thing because I love New York and I've worked a lot in New York. And, uh, and I was down there doing that with Eddie. And of course, I'm, I'm a big fan of Eddie's work uh, with Jimmy, obviously. Yeah. And he's done so much more. He's such a gentleman. I love Eddie. And, and we're still friends. And when I had my book signing, shh, shh, who was there? Eddie. Eddie Kramer. <laughs> he was there. And what a surprise that was. So they well, couldn't miss it, mate. You know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, what a gentleman. Class act. So anyway, uh, yeah, working there with him was uh was very, very cool. And uh I enjoyed that experience a lot. Um, oh, I have to ask, do you recall seeing Maggie Trudeau at the yeah, uh, oh, well, I did, I did see uh, Maggie Trudeau. In my book, I, I kind of joke about it a little bit, but I was introduced to her. Uh, I mean, she had a lot of security. And As it really was high. And uh, I really like your band, April Wine. I, I love, love your music and thank you. Good next. You know, it was really, wasn't meeting royalty, you know, <laughs> but uh, it was kind of cool, you know, it was kind of cool to say hi, you know. She was a beautiful woman. And, yes, and yeah. she was, and probably is still a beautiful woman. Yeah. Miles, thanks a million. Last time I saw you, you were playing a Ride for Sight gig. You were playing an outdoor gig with April Wine. It was amazing. Oh, cool. Right. I don't, I don't remember. There's so many of them. But we, <laughs> I know. I was back on the road. I leave tomorrow. I'm going out to play uh, to play some shows tomorrow. And like, I'm excited just to see the boys and, and see fans and just make a loud noise. I'll make a point of coming to see you and, uh, and thanks, uh, good health and great yeah. gigs. And, and thanks again for joining us. Yeah. It's my pleasure. Stay okay, safe. My, be well. Okay, man. Bye. Bye.